Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Pigments. This is video five, and today we're gonna to be talking about frequency modulation, or FM for short. So before we dive into how this works on these knobs, we kind of need a little bit of understanding of what FM is if you don't already. So a good example I brought is going to be Citrus right here. So if we go to a default patch here, and then what we're gonna hear is just a sine wave out of the box, as we can see as well in the oscilloscope. So if you hop over to operator number two or oscillator number two, and let's give this a value of 0.1 Hertz here, and let's frequency modulate at the maximum value. And let's listen to a note. Now it might almost sound the same, but if we mute this and we hit the note, we can see this waveform is static. It's not moving at all. But as we increase this, we can slowly start to see it move back and forth. And now as we increase the value of the second oscillator, we can start to hear it changing the pitch. So that's what it kind of means. Frequency modulation, modulation means changing something. And in this case, it's the frequency. So operator number two is going at such a slow rate, so 4.3 hertz, which is where we can't even hear that, but we can see the influence it has on modulating the pitch of the operator that we do hear. We're still in LFO territory here. And then eventually it's gonna to come to a point where we don't really hear it as a vibrato effect anymore. We hear it more so as a tonality effect. And by moving this knob, it's really just moving the volume of this operator number two that's influencing the frequency or changing or modulating the frequency of operator number one, which in this case are both gonna be sine waves. So hopefully that clears that up a little bit. So let's dive back into pigments and see how that works here. So as we looked at before in the analog engine of the previous video, we had these FM knobs here, which is tied to modulator on oscillator number three. So this is going to be the source. Think of it as the modulator that's affecting the carrier, which is gonna be the, the waveform that we hear. So the same thing that we were doing in Citrus, if we had a sine wave here and a sine wave here, and we start to modulate it, Now this is a little bit different sound because this oscillator here is actually in audible territory. And as soon as we drop this down even more, which is why you citrus, because we can go so, so uh, fine detail in that sense. It's very fast, but we can almost kind of discern a, a vibrato type of effect there. So jumping over to the wavetable, we have that same type of option, although there's a little difference here. So in the modulator section, we have the tune, the volume of this operator or oscillator that we're gonna be modulating with, the fine tuning, and also the wave. So the shape of the modulator that we're gonna be using to influence what we do here, which is in this case, the sine wave from the wavetable. So if we go to 2D, this is gonna be the sine wave that we hear. And on this modulator, we're gonna choose a sine wave, so it's the same type of shape, and we're gonna choose this to frequency modulate what we hear with this knob here. As we can see, if we follow this line, it goes left, it goes down, it goes all the way to the left again, and then up to this knob here. And as we drop this pitch down here, we get that same type of a vibrato effect, although very fast. So this, is, this linear type is gonna be more so the traditional FM sound we hear, but Arturia also included the exponential version, which is pretty wild, as they say in their manual, and it goes out of tune very fast. So if we bring this back to our normal, and let's turn this down a little bit, because who knows what's gonna happen. So in a nutshell, kind of think of linear as more the traditional sound and exponential as a very, very FM kind of on steroids, I guess, that goes out of tune very fast in that sense. So that's kind of the difference between those two. Wow. 
And one of the last things we do re need to talk about is on the modulator shapes here, we have sine, triangle, sawtooth, ramp, which is basically a uh, sawtooth with inverted polarity, and then square wave. And then below this, we have different noises. So we have a rumble, a red noise, a pink noise, a white noise, and a blue noise. Now, when we select any of the ones down here, this tuning is going to be grayed out because this is basically just noise. It's not necessarily a discernible pitch. So that being said, let's go to sign. And we have a lot of different modes here. So a good way to kind of showcase this is let's turn down our wavetable volume and then we'll turn up the modulator volume. And this is going to be a sine wave. So what we're hearing here, let's turn this back up, is going to be the modulator itself, not the wavetable, but the modulator. And as you change this tuning in relative mode, we see that the tuning is working, it's changing it. And we can tune it or change it here as well on the course. That's engine wide. So this is going to be a relative as we see a relative to this course tuning right here. However, if we change this to absolute, it's still basically going to be its own pitch. Now it's kind of going to be a little bit more independent. This here, if I move this course tuning, it's not going to have any more effect on the top left here. But if I go back to relative, Now the course knob over here on the left is going to be influencing this because it's on relative. So I can move this all day and the pitch is changing because it's in relative, but if I go back to absolute, nothing happens because now this knob here is going to be more independent. And that's going to be, be more so useful once we start diving into more FM kind of stuff and you start understanding the concept a little bit more. These two different options here are going to be very helpful. The last one we have here is Hertz, which is similar to what we had before. So this is actually really cool because the manual says it's 20 Hertz to 3K, but it's actually all the way to 20K. And we can actually see that because if we have a note here, let's turn this down because it could get out of control. More so look over here on the spectrum view. This is going from 20 to 20K, so quite a healthy range. So basically all our auditory hearing capabilities we have right here. So it's kind of like we have a, a, a signal generator that goes from 20 to 20 built into pigments that you could use for whatever you want. You load up a wavetable, turn down the wavetable volume, and then just use this modulator by itself. And then you can have any frequency standard at what you want. You can do frequency sweeps if you need to. A really nice uh, feature that's in there as well. There's a lot of hidden oscillators in this synth, which is very interesting. So that being said, we have those three different versions of tuning here, and then the fine, which is going to be down one semitone and plus, which is up one semitone, and the different shapes as we spoke about before. So that's basically this wave engine in a nutshell. In the following videos, we're going to be talking about the phase modulation, the phase distortion, wave folding, and so on, so forth, so forth, and kind of break them down because they can they can be a little overwhelming once you see all these different options here and mod sync, random, what is all this stuff, and these targets, and what's phase modulation, distortion, all that stuff. So we're going to cover those in a separate video. So thank you for watching. If you learned something, if you liked the video, please, please press like, and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.